All right, here we go, moment of truth. Welcome to part two on the 1981 Honda XR100. As you guys know, I picked up this bike a couple of videos ago for, what was it? I believe it was $450. I think that's what they paid for it. Maybe it was 400. But um, anyway, we uh, got the bike home and uh, it looked pretty good from the outside. You know, like the frame isn't too bad, the plastics are all there, it was complete. But when we tore into the engine, we found that uh, it was pretty rough. You can see from this side, it's complete rust. Um, the piston and everything was completely lodged in there. The cylinder is all rust, you can see. It's, um, it's, it's pretty rough. Um, you can see the side covers, complete rust. Um, the rockers were locked up. The cam is okay, but the valve, one valve is bent right there. The, I believe it's the intake valve. Yep, the intake valve is bent. Um, the exhaust valve's fine, but again, complete rust. Rockers, again, were locked up. Everything was pretty much tight on this thing. And um, we left it to where we took off the cylinder, the piston, and uh, right now we're in need of a flywheel and a stator. I'll show you guys the flywheel. Oh, here's the piston as well. But uh, this is what the flywheel looks like. <laughs> Just a tad rough. And the stator actually came off with the flywheel, looks like. That's part of the stator. But yeah, you can just see it's complete rust. Really, really rough. There's the stator right there. That was supposed to connect right there. But uh, you can see it's just really, really rough. Um, these screws are stripped out right here. So we're going to have to drill those out to get the engine split. But um, yeah, here's what the piston looks like. One of the rings was broken. The second ring you can see right there is missing and broken. Um, but overall the piston doesn't look too bad. It looks like a guy basically left this in the water for like years and years and years. That's what it kind of seems like. And everyone in the comments was like, are you sure it wasn't uh, left in the lake? <laughs> so it almost looks like it was just pulled out of a lake and um, then it just rusted completely like this. So it's pretty rough. We're going to tear into the engine today and just see if this thing's worth saving. I want to look at the clutch, the transmission. Right now it doesn't shift. So I want to look and see what the transmission looks like. Hopefully it's not just all gunked with rust. Um, the clutch side has no oil in it, so I'm guessing it's going to be pretty rough. But if it's salvageable, we can probably rebuild this thing. Um, I've been looking for an engine as well, um, a good bottom end. You know, just to give us something to work with, but I haven't been finding anything, especially for 1981. So, we are going to try to save this thing. We got it freed up last video, so the crank does spin, and the crank does feel pretty decent. No uh, up and down play, just a little bit of side to side. So I think we can save the crank if we can get the rest of this thing saved. All right, let's start by getting off the kick lever here. Looks like a 12 millimeter. That was on there pretty good. Hopefully this can come off of here. It's all caked with rust. Every part of this bike just takes forever to strip down because it's so, it's so rough. Working with older bikes, everything takes 10 times longer than what it's really supposed to take. Really need to have some patience to work on these. I've almost given up like 10 times already. There we go. <sighs> <sighs> Those are gonna give me a pain in the butt. 
Those are going to be difficult. see if we can get the hand impact and get those off. All right, I got one of them out right here. Just need some force. <laughs> oh boy. Really have to hit these suckers. Continue all the way around, get those off, but uh, that tool seems to be working. All right, we got all the, the screws loose. Let's get these out. Look how long these guys are. There's no way we would have been able to get those out without that. Look how corroded that one is. Yikes. They're just so corroded. It's crazy. There's one in here too. See a little corrosion. All right, I think they're all off. Here. There's oil coming out of it. That's a good sign. See a little bit of oil coming out. So there was some in there, just not on the dipstick. Let's see if we can get this. Ooh, she's a little rough. Yeah, that's what the cover looks like. It's not too bad. Not as bad as I thought it was going to be, but um, not the greatest either. I mean, it's not horrible. Guessing the clutch plates are stuck. She's a little rough. It has water in it. You can see the bubbles forming. So there's definitely water in the case. And that was pretty obvious because we can see rust everywhere. That oil soaked up. So there's a little oil screen 
on this thing right here. Zoom into there. Let's just take that out and see what that looks like. If we can without ripping it. There we go. She's a little rough. Not really too many metal chunks though. So that's a good sign. But you can see all the rust in there. It's just like cake. So definitely needs to be cleaned. <laughs> but at least there was a little bit of oil in there to save some of the stuff from rusting too bad. That one's stripped out. Hmm. That's not good. See, this is what I'm talking about. Everything takes 10 times longer because now we've got a stripped bolt right there. And we can't get the clutch off until we get the bolt off. So. All right, had a pound of three eighths um, socket on there to get that out. But we got her out. That bearing in there is pretty, pretty rough. You can see that doesn't spin at all. And that's a bearing right there, so. That should be spinning. That's tight. Get the springs off of here. And then it looks like we've got a clip. All right, clip came off. Uh, we should be able to get the clutch out of here. <laughs> Look at the clutch plates. They're all like formed together. Yeesh. That is pretty rough. That's exciting. That uh, doesn't look too good. The inner basket looks pretty good. You can see all the teeth on here, nice and square. And you can see the outer basket, there's no grooves in here, which is good. Couple right there maybe, nothing serious or anything. Doesn't look too bad. You know, if this wasn't, if this didn't get water in it, I think it would be a really nice bike. Ooh, transmission. I think all the bearings are toast. All right, we're gonna get that nut off, 19 millimeter. We got our crank locked up here. That comes off like that. A little washer behind there. All right, that came right off. I think this gear can come off too. Probably corroded on pretty tight. That'll probably come off when we split the case, I would think. All right, pretty rusty, as you can see. Hopefully we don't have to drill these out.
those are uh, pretty tight in there, these three. So we're gonna work at that for a bit, come back once uh, those are out. All right, that was like a miracle. We got these guys out. Those are locked tight down too, looks like. It's always good when you don't have to drill them out. That guy's on there pretty good. Just a tad rusty. Might be able to save the stator though. That'd be good, because these things are like 250 bucks. In here, kind of wanting to come. Woodruff key out of here. See if I can do that. Let's fill tap. There's a the woodruff key right there. There's a the woodruff key. Maybe this thing will come off now. <laughs> Maybe not. All right, so we're kind of stuck right here. I cannot get this piece off. I looked at the diagram and that's not even on there. So I don't really know why that didn't come off with the flywheel. I think it was supposed to. So what we're going to do is get the case splitter on there and see if we can pull that off with the case. I think that's really the only way we can get the thing off. So let's get the case splitter on and see what happens here. For getting these bolts out, I like to use a vice grips. Let's see if we can get it. That one came pretty easily. All right, one more to go. There we go. All right, that bolt's coming. Trying to break up some of that rust in there. There we go. Hee hee hee. Looks like our pump has to come off. All right, oil pump coming out. There's that guy. Look at all the rust behind there. Look at all the rust behind there. Crazy. All right, we're almost there. Let's see. Alright, here we go, moment of truth. Let's see what's in here. I 
if this thing can come off here. There we go. <laughs> Those bearings are so tight. Those are terrible. Locked up completely. So you can see the seal in there. All the bearings are junk. Over here. Crank bearing doesn't seem too bad. Transmission's a little rusty. It probably wasn't shifting because the bearings were locked up. I think it's pretty smooth. Probably needs new bearings. All right, we got the transmission out. You can see transmission gears are actually pretty decent. Um, bearings stuck on that one, but bearings toast. Listen to that. Um, it's stuck right on that gear. Crank seems to be okay. Crank bearings feel fine. Pretty smooth, and then rod bearing is pretty good. No up and down play or anything. You can see the drum, no wear, no shiny spots. So that looks pretty good. Shift forks don't appear to be bent, but uh, it's hard to tell with the naked eye. Then our kickstart mechanism looks good. And then we've got the cover right here. This is the uh, right side cover. Bearing is pretty bad. <laughs> and I think there's only one bearing right there. So it's not horrible. This really needs to be cleaned up. See, it says HM up there. Everything on this side looks good except for that bearing, so you just pop that bearing out. So that doesn't look too bad. And then the other case has uh, those bearings that need to be replaced badly. But yeah, not too bad. I was I was actually expecting it to be worse than this, so it's good that the crank is still fine, um, and uh, it's good that the transmission's still okay. All the teeth are fine on it, so that would need to soak in the ultrasonic cleaner before we use them again and get them really cleaned up. Get all the cases cleaned up really well. I mean, just there's just sludge everywhere on this thing. It was definitely the hardest engine to take apart. Every bolt was rusted on. Cases were stuck. You can see the uh, pins right here. Rusty. So everything was just really difficult taking this thing off. But uh, we got it off. I'm going to quick make a parts list for everything we need for this bike and see if it's worth rebuilding. We're going to go through all the parts and uh, see what we need, and then come up with a grand total. Um, I paid, I think, 450 for this bike, so these bikes typically go for right around like a thousand bucks in like decent condition, running, driving condition. So if it was restored, it'd probably go for around 2000. All right, so I did some calculations. I'm here on my computer, and um, I looked up all these parts. So right now, this is what I can kind of remember for parts. So we've got 1981 Honda XR100, parts needed, we need clutch plates that are $27, piston rings, $100, all new bearings for the bottom end, $75, throttle cable, $10, brake cable, $11, timing chain is $25, 
a valve. We need the intake valve, which is $30. Top and bottom end gaskets, the whole kit was $26. Foot pegs were $14. Air filter, $20. Stator, so this is the part where um, it kind of sucks because the stator is $190, you can see right there. And then the flywheel, which we may or may not need, is 150. I'm pretty sure we need the flywheel. So the total cost for parts all added up was $678. And then the starting cost, I paid $450 for the bike initially. So those added together is a total cost of $1,128. And then time, right now I've got about 10 hours into the teardown process. And then probably like another five hours for the complete rebuild. So we're looking at 15 hours. I like to make at least $75 per hour, so that's 75 times 15 is $1,125 for the rebuild. That's my time, what my time is worth. So total, we have $2,253 all in. Um, that's complete rebuild, um, running bike, and that's going to be $2,253. So if we subtracted the um, time I spent on it, we're only looking at... $1,128, which isn't too bad, but um, that's a lot of time uh, spent on it. So right there, that's a that's a pretty big price to pay for a bike that's just running and not restored. Um, I know restored bikes go for 2,000, so we're over $2,000 and it's not even restored. So I don't know if it's going to be worth my time to buy all these parts and put it all back together and have it running. And plus, I think we'll probably run into other parts that we need along the way. So I think I'm going to call it quits and sell this bike as parts. I know everyone wanted me to continue the build and uh, get this thing done, but I just don't think it's worth it. I mean, you can buy a running, driving bike for really like 600 to 800 bucks, an XR100. So but it's just so rough. It's been sitting in water. Um, I'm sure all the wheel bearings are junk. I'm sure all the tires are junk. So that's even more money put into it. I think we're gonna call it quits there. Um, thanks for watching guys, thanks for subscribing. Stay tuned for more videos to come. Sorry, uh, this one was just a little bit too rough to rebuild and make it worth my time. So anyway guys, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing. Stay tuned for next video. And until next time, we are out.